What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 167 of the Stand Up Guys podcast. I'm your host, the incomparable Zach Jones, joined as always by the ninth wonder, Chocolate Thunder. He's looking for a mate to punch that prostate, the teeth gritting, keeping his shiznit in, hankering, hankering and begging for a spanker and pagan, the phenomenal A. Hey. Jay Singh. What's up, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, AJ, let's get into it. Uh, this week, we're going to be reviewing Loki Season 2, Episode 4. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, episode is an ent- entitled Heart of the TVA, which I don't think is a very clever title. Yeah, I don't... What, is that like a reference to anything, or is it just... I was trying to think now, like, looking back on the episode, does this... I don't know. Doesn't really make sense, does it? I don't know. Maybe it does. I mean, it makes me think of Heart of Darkness, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's a Heart of Darkness uh, <laughs> reference. <tie. laughs> yeah. um, before we get into it, AJ, uh, top level thoughts on this episode? Yeah, I enjoyed it. You know, um, there is a massive heel turn <laughs> in this yes. episode. Yeah, it's big time. Uh, you know, uh, but I mean, I guess it, it's kind of in line with what we saw in season one from that character. So, uh, this is very extreme, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I enjoyed the episode. I was kind of wondering like what, what's going to happen when the whole loom situation gets resolved, does not get resolved in this episode. <laughs> right. Uh, but, um, at least I can tell like there's there's multiple things they're fighting on multiple fronts now yeah i was gonna say if one thing disappointed me in this episode it, it's that it, they didn't get the loom thing done yeah. because i'm just ready for that thing to be over with but right. maybe that's just gonna go on for the whole season i mean the way they went with it i'm kind of interested now to see what happens with it. of course you know it is very very much like everything hinges on what just happened at the end of this episode the thing is is like some some very shocking things happen in the episode but then the way it ends, I'm like, just like, oh, this has to be undone in some way or another. Right, for sure. So it's like it kind of, you know, dampens things to where I'm like, oh, okay. But I'm also curious, like, what happened? Like, is it going to be like some brand new timeline that's event- invented here? Like, is it, are they all going to be like, like, where, like lost and confused, like where they are and what's going on. Like they have these strange lives maybe or something. I don't know. I, I just don't know what's going to happen. I could see them doing something like that. Like, yeah, like they wake each of them, like next episode, wake up in some weird place and they're like, you know. What the hell happened? And it's just like maybe one timeline or who knows. But yeah, I mean, they have to figure out their way back and try to fix what happened. All their memories are erased. Yeah. I could see something like that happening. Right. Um. Or it'd be funny if it's just like, um, nope, everyone on that timeline is gone, and now it's just a whole new, you know, like, <laughs> a whole new series. <laughs> oh, yeah, this just starts over again. Yeah. <laughs> Some random Loki. <laughs> but, you know, there's there's one... There was one thing in this episode that like seemed like very like um, brutal, which we'll get to. Yeah. But now that... like this episode ended the way I, it did. I was like, oh, are they just going to undo that as well? I, yeah. It was very brutal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think for a, is this like a PG-13 show or what is this? I, don't I would assume so, yeah. Yeah, I, I would think they would remedy that whole thing. <laughs> they would try to fix that. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, the most brutal part happens off camera. It's right. just kind of left to your imagination, but... Um, it is like a pretty bad thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, let's see. Anything else before we get into it? Uh, let's get into it. All right, guys. We're going to get uh, very detailed and spoilers here. Uh, break down the uh, episode scene by scene and give our thoughts as we go along. So, AG, this opens up uh, where the last episode left off with Miss Minutes and Renslayer at the end of time. So... Miss Mendes promised she was going to slow, show Renslayer something that would uh, anger her. So what she shows her is a video of Renslayer um, basically at the end of time with He Who Remains. And we find out that Renslayer was like uh, like the general of his army, I yeah. guess, and helped him succeed. And uh, so they're kind of ruling the place together. And she sees that uh, he who remains ordered Miss Minutes to to wipe her memory. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, that gets her going. Uh, 
And uh, Miss Minutes tells Renslayer that they don't need he, he Who Remains and that maybe they never did. Um, so now we go to the TVA. Uh, Timely arrives at the TVA. You know what I thought was kind of weird? So the end, of, towards the end of last episode, we saw Timely, Mobius, and Loki go through a time door mm. to the TVA. Why do they? Why did he appear in a different place separately from them? Yeah, all by himself for like a good few minutes. It seemed like because <laughs> I could swear there's other like scenes in this series where multiple people go through a time door and they just appear all in the same yeah. place, you know? Yeah. So it's like, why wouldn't that have happened this time? You know, it was just for the effect. It was just for the plot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I thought that was kind of BS, but he, he appears, uh, by himself. Um, and he kind of looks up at these murals, which, uh, I guess the time gods. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the time gods. And then on the left side was like the time war. Mission. I was wondering what that was. Yeah, because there was like it looked like a bunch of guys like flying and fighting with each other. Yeah, a bunch of kings. Is that fighting. what it was? A bunch it, of kings fighting. It looked like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting. I was wondering what that uh, part of things were. Um, so he looks at that for a minute, but then the others show up, uh, and so the Loki and Mobius and the, uh, they urge him to help fix the loom. Uh, we get a scene between the Judge Lady and uh, B fifteen. Can I ask you something? That, okay, that judge character that's in the wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Is that a weird-looking old woman or a younger woman in weird makeup and prosthetics? I was trying to give Marvel credit for hiring somebody who's like, um, what, what's the word that we use? Oh, like actually maybe like uh, can't walk or... Yeah, somebody who's in that... Actually confined to a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. So I... I I was hoping that they hired somebody who's actually in that. Situation. They might have. I just, I couldn't, because she's a very distinct looking woman. Yeah. And I honestly couldn't tell if like, does she just have a weird look or did they have a, put an actor in prosthetics to give them, a, you know, a more distinct look? I, I couldn't tell. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and <laughs> think they okay. hired somebody like that. Yeah. Um, so this judge tells B-15 uh, that General Docs and her followers are being held in confinement. Uh, the judge says in the past they would have just pruned them all, uh, but they need to change. And she tells B-15 she needs to convince General Docs to conform to their new ways. Um, B-15 says she doesn't think that's possible, uh, but the judge says don't be so sure uh, because B-15's words uh, changed her. Now, <laughs> this episode, they'll, they'll kind of like portray Docs General Docs is kind of like a sympathetic character, but really, if you think about it, she is very Hitlery. <laughs> oh, sure. <yeah. laughs> I mean, look, I get that to save you know the timeline at all, she had to do something, but man, uh, she wiped out like billions of people at the same time. <laughs> yeah, technically, she her her uh, body count is higher than Hitler. Yeah, way higher. <laughs> <laughs> um. So now we get a scene where Victor Timely meets OB and they have like this weird the back and forth where like, you know, he's like, oh, you inspired your handbook inspired me to do all this stuff. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, well, I was inspired by this smart guy from the, you know, uh, 1800s or something. Right. And it's it, this whole thing about like, you know, time paradox, which one of them, you know, inspired who type of thing. But that does kind of lead towards answering our question about could this be the original Kang? Because if he learned originally from Victor Timely from the 1800s, then it's possible that this guy becomes Kang, right? Like he is the original, could be the original Kang. Oh, yeah. You know, some people online are saying that like, you know, maybe OB is like a version of Kang. But, but then I'm like, that to me doesn't make sense. But also it's like, he looks completely different. Yeah, because all the kings so far have had one consistent they look, Yeah, look. they're Jonathan Majors in yeah. some form or another, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Although I guess if they have to fire Jonathan Majors, maybe yeah, they can make it work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so their plan is for someone to go out in, in a radiation suit like Mobius did in, uh, in episode one and launch the th throughput multiplier. That's the device OB made a couple episodes ago. They're going to launch that at the loom to increase the loom's capacity so it can handle more branches. 
Uh, but the problem is the radiation outside is now much, much worse than when Mobius went out. And so whoever goes out in the suit, they're going to have to do it very, very quickly to survive. And uh, there's also a problem. Get ready for some nonsense science stuff. There's also a problem where the throughput multiplier can't compensate for the loom's temporal decay. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, Timely's prototype that he took from his lab in the last episode, uh, it, it uh, can solve this problem if they can, him and OB team up and can figure out how to like attach that to this thing that he made. Apparently, it'll, it'll work. Right. Uh, but yeah, the, I like how sometimes sci-fi shows, they're just like, oh, we're just going to make up a bunch of words, right. <laughs> slam them together. And... I mean, you can't disprove it. Who knows <laughs> what that even means? <laughs> <laughs> Throughput multiplier, temporal <laughs> decay. Um, so while they're working, Mobius uh, suggests to Loki and Sylvie that they get some pie, which causes Sylvie to kind of lose her temper and blow <laughs> yeah. up at Mobius, which I thought was a little overkill. Yeah, I thought so too. But she's like, oh, you're not taking this seriously. And and she tells him, oh, you just, you don't care because you never took the time, um, you know, to to look at your own timeline and see where you come from. So you don't care about that the timeline. That was so shoehorned in. Like, what? I, I thought so too. I, <laughs> I thought like, you know, he has been like, you know, visibly working to help save the day yeah. for you know, a while now. And she also said at some point that you're going to rely on them three or whatever to fix it. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you don't have the knowledge or anything to fix this problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. That I means your best bet. Um, so now we go to uh, the prison cell where all the, uh, where Brad, General Docs, and all the prisoners are being held. So Brad tries to kind of give this uh, inspirational speech to the other prisoners about, you know, I think basically about how they can uh, escape and, and or whatnot. Uh, General Docs tells him to shut up, and she tells him how they know about him selling it, everybody out and, you know, his whole acting career that he had on that one timeline he stayed in. Uh, so then B-15 enters, and uh, now she's trying to convince Doc, uh, Docs. So she says... Um, you know, even though they have their differences, she knows General Docs, above all, wants to protect the TVA. So she wants Docs and her Minutemen uh, to basically help uh, and, you know, pr protect the the new style TVA. And uh, General Docs is like, well, how can I uh, trust you? And, and basically she's just like, well, you know... At the end of the day, we want the same goal. We want to protect the TVA. And so you can count on me for that. Um, so she leaves to let him think it over. Um, so now we get kind of a lengthy scene between Loki and Sylvie. Um, so Loki tells uh, Sylvie that she's only back because she couldn't kill Timely. Uh, but he does say, you know, by sparing him, you have saved billions of lives. You saved all the, you know... Time, other the timelines that are still alive and everything. Um, so Sylvie says Loki is putting a lot of trust in Timely and the TVA, um, especially since General Docs killed so many people. Um, she asks why he believes the TVA can become better, and Loki basically cites the efforts of, you know, the people on his team, like Mobius, B-15, Casey, OB... And he's like, look, those guys already saved a bunch of lives. Um, Sylvie says it would be easier just to burn down the TVA and start from scratch. Uh, Loki says des destroying things is easy and that trying to fix what is broken is hard, that hope is hard. Uh, Sylvie expresses doubt in Timely and the TVA becoming good and says that um, that's a lot of hoping uh, that you're doing. Um Sylvie is dubious of them getting timely, uh, of them giving timely a look behind the curtain. And Loki says, well, maybe they can, uh, this way they can keep an eye on him and protect him. Uh, Sylvie says, oh, interfere for good. I've heard that one before. And uh, Loki says, you can't just give people free will and then just walk away. He says, for better or worse, the timelines are free and it's up to them to prote protect them and do better uh, than he who remains. Now, that line by Loki that, you know, 
you just can't give people free will or free will and just walk away. Mm. That line seems, you know, somewhat villainous. Yeah, it does. Especially given like, you know, this whole show is like, you know, he had his whole thing in the first Avengers movie where he was basically kind of being Hillary, right? Yeah. And then like that's and then in like episode one of season one, they basically show a video of to him of everything that happened to original Loki and he just flipped the switch and like, okay, I'll be good now, you know. Yeah. Um but that line makes me think like, I don't know, maybe <laughs> Yeah, he even gave that speech at that like in Germany when he was like, Isn't it easier to not have to like think for yourselves basically? Right, exactly, like... exactly. <laughs> so you'd think if now he's like the good Loki, like maybe he wouldn't have that thought. Yeah. Cause even like the next line is like Sylvie says it sounds like uh we're playing gods and Loki says, We are gods. Yeah, so it does seem like he's he's not really completely changed. Right, right. <laughs> But it is kind of like you said, like, you know, Sylvie's like, you know, blown up at him. But like, it, like, what would her like yeah. solution be? All would, she's doing is presenting problems. She's not presenting any solutions. <laughs> <laughs> she's just and like, she's like, burn the TV, TVA down and, and start from scratch. It's like, what, like, what's her idea there? Like, yeah. kill everybody here? <laughs> And I then, mean, you still have to save the loom. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so, now back in the prison, uh, Brad tells Docs uh, and the Minutemen that they can't trust B-15. Uh, she's only in it for herself and that they need some sort of backup plan. Uh, so, at that moment, a time door opens up and Renslayer and Miss Minute show up. Uh, so, Renslayer says B-15 is trying to take over the TVA, uh, but if they work together, they can stop her. Uh, Doc says the only thing Renslayer wants uh, is to protect herself. Uh, Renslayer says she's been gone for two days and the place is about to explode. Um, she says anyone who joins her can follow her out of the time door and have a life of their own on the timeline. So um, Brad tries to convince Docs to accept that deal. Uh, but Docs refuses, and then all the other Minutemen refuse. So Miss Minutes uh, turns on that weird, like, box-creating machine from, yeah. I think, Episode 2, and turns it on and basically crushes all of them. Of course, it's yeah. done off-screen, but this is what I was referencing earlier. This is a pretty brutal play. Yeah, that is w a way to go, man. Like, what the hell? That was wild. I did not <laughs> expect that. You know what I kind of don't like about this, though, is because, like, the Renslayer character, I thought, had a little bit of depth because she was kind of a, like a Shades of Grey. Like, yeah. you did get the sense, like, in like the last episode that, okay, she doesn't seem all bad. Like, and right. maybe, like, she can be redeemed. But then this is so over-the-top evil, like, yeah. irredeemably evil, yeah. that now I just look at her and I'm like, oh, she's just, like, you know, might as well be a mustache-twirling villain because yeah. it's so... I mean, yeah, she's just the bad guy now. It's black and white with that, you know. She's just bad. Like, she, there was conversations between her and Mobius where he's always trying to, like, get her to sway her, you right. know. And after seeing this, it's like, that was never going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't, yeah, yeah, I have mixed feelings about that just because I'm like, I kind of liked her being somewhere in between but yeah. now she's just like full on like dark side evil yeah, and and further into the episode we'll see that she doesn't have a plan either like she's trying to fix the tva but she's only trying to sabotage it and make it harder to fix the loom honestly yeah i mean her only goal really seems to be to get he who remains back in charge is it I, well uh, well that's definitely Miss Minute's goal. And it seemed like it was Renslayer's goal unless she has, like, plans of her own. Yeah. Which she might. Yeah, I don't know. She seems just very pissed off at everybody. <laughs> but now, now that we, like, when the episode gets to the end and we know, like, they're going to have to in some way undo things, I'm wondering if they're just going to undo this whole 
killing all of these people. Right, yeah. Which, t- like, even though I don't like Renslayer was that evil, like, I don't know, it seems like you don't want every time something shocking happens to be just undone, you know? Right, yeah. You want some sort of consequence, so. Yeah. Um, so Brad ends up leaving with Renslayer. Now, I will say they do, like, you, you do get the sense that Brad cared for General Docs, and he did not like that this happened. Yeah. But, it, like, his, he's kind of a cowardly, so he's just like, I'm going to save myself. He's cowardly against one person. Like, it's only Renslayer. He doesn't try to fight back or rebel against her or anything. He just goes along with it at that moment. Right. Yeah. Um, so now we get a scene where Obi and Timely assemble the throughput multiplier. And they put his little device on there. So I thought this was a little bit weird. So Mobius comes into the room and he's drinking um, a cup of hot chocolate. And Timely like becomes obsessed with this cup of hot chocolate. And he's like, where'd you get that? And he, and Mobius is like, oh, the, the hot cocoa machine. Um, and, and he's like, oh, there's a machine for cocoa. <laughs> and, uh, you would think that would be like below his pedigree. Like he could easily make one of those. Right, exactly. You would, <laughs> like he just made like this yeah. b- sphere of like science ball that thing. OB couldn't figure out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he like becomes obsessed with it. So Moby is like, all right, guard, go ahead and take him and show him the hot cocoa machine, which, uh, you know, for Mobius, it seems like a stupid idea. Right. Especially since, like, they should really, now that they got that thing together, why aren't they just instantly going to the loom? Like, you can see the, mach- the cocoa machine later. Like, yeah. let's get a jump on this loom thing. Right. Um, so now we get a scene where B-15 discovers all the dead prisoners, um, which I'm guessing is just like a... a river of like blood and like meshed up like bones yeah flesh just, <laughs> yeah golly uh, and then she tries to use her temp pad uh but uh miss minutes is preventing her from using the temp pad she like took over the system and isn't letting her use it um so timely <laughs> this i also thought was a little weird so timely he gets a cup of hot chocolate and he gives it to the guard and he's like Drink it, drink it. So I'm like, okay, is he taking a weird heel turn here? Yeah, that sounds like, is he poison it or something? Yeah, that's what I thought. He's like, oh, yeah, he's going to poison the guard. <laughs> so the guard takes a drink, and surely enough, the guard starts reacting. So I'm like, okay, did he poison him? But then the guard just, like, explodes like he gets pruned. Yeah, yeah. And Brad is there with a the pruning stick. Now, question for you, because did <laughs> it just looks weird because, like, did, did Brad just, like, stab him from behind with the pruning stick? Because it almost looked like Brad exploded, like, uh, from inside the sky. Because <laughs> 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 he was just, like, there. It wasn't like the guy disappeared and Brad was behind him. It was like the guy, like, <laughs> it almost looked like Brad, like, exploded from <laughs> inside of him. <laughs> it looked weird. Uh, uh, so Brad, yeah, Brad appears and he asks Timely where the device is. Um, so now OB discovers that Miss Minutes has taken over all of the computer systems. Um, the team discovers, uh, they find like the spilled hot cocoa and the, so they know Timely is missing. And then B-15 shows up and real, reveals to them that Docs and all the prisoners are dead. Um, so Loki says that Renslayer wants the TVA and so he knows that she's still in the building somewhere. Uh, so now we get a scene. Uh, they're inside that conference room with all like the um, faces of the different Kangs that was uh, shown, I think, in like episode one. Um, so Rensselaer asks Timely where his device is and threatens to kill him if uh, they don't like uh, what he has to say. Which really, that seems like a false threat because no, like their goal depends on Timely, right? I, what was I don't know what their goal is at that point. Is it to fix the timeline? Well, or? I mean, he who remains put the thing into play to give him the guidebook. Hmm. So we got to figure like the plan involves him staying alive. But I mean, now that she's like figured out that he wiped her memory and everything, like oh, that's a good. She's point. kind of pissed at him too, right? So does she even want him around? Like, you make a good point. Yeah, I forgot about that part. So like, yeah, maybe she does figure like 
Okay, screw he who remains. Yeah. I'll just become head of the TV. Something like that, yeah. I could, okay, yeah, I could see that. Um, so Loki and Sylvie um, are in pursuit of Renslayer. And they get a, end up getting separated uh, with Sylvie in an elevator and Loki having to take some stairs. And once this happened, I'm like, oh, okay. Now it's coming to that scene we predicted yeah. on episode one yeah. with her in the elevator and Loki pruning himself. And it kind of goes in line with that whole Ouroboros theme that they have, like, you know, the snake eating his own tail sort of thing. Right. And they even reference that um, in that earlier scene where, you know, Timely and Obi were saying how they... Yeah. Both inspired each other, and Obi's like, "Oh, like the snake eating its own tail." You yeah. Know? Um. So sure enough, Loki comes up the stairs, and he sees himself from episode one, and he prunes himself. And uh, Sylvie opens the elevator, and uh, Loki looks at her and says, "I promise this will make sense." She just goes along with it. <laughs> she right. doesn't even question it. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so now, um, the ringing phone. Now, I, I thought for sure in episode one we were going to find out like that Loki or someone called the phone to get him in that position. But that yeah. didn't actually happen. So Loki answers the phone. And they kind of make it give you a sense like, like oh, maybe it's going to be an ominous thing. Like he picks it up and Kang's on the other end. Or, or like Miss Minutes or somebody. Something you know? like yeah. that. But no, it just ends up being OB asking, uh, you know, what's taking so long. Yeah. Um, they say Miss Minutes is slowing everything down. She's in the system. So OB says... He can get rid of her if he reboots the system, uh, but this will eliminate all the security protocols. And Mobius is like, what does that mean? And he's like, well, it'll allow magic to be used in the TVA. So, like, Loki and Sylvie, like, scream at him, like, to do it so that yeah. they can use their magic. Um, so, now back to that conference room. Timely is seemingly trying to uh, stall Renslayer. Uh, when Miss Minute starts glitching out because they reboot the system. And, like, in her last moments before she totally, like, um, glitches out, she tells Timely that he'll never be he who remains. Mm -hmm. Which, because she said that line, kind of makes me think that, you know, maybe he will end up being a good, a good guy. Yeah. Yeah, he has a chance. Who knows? Now, also, like... Uh, I feel like Miss Menace has been a big enough character that, you know, she'll have to come back. Yeah, I mean, I don't care if she comes back or goes, to be honest. But, yeah, I mean, maybe we'll see her again. <laughs> I think she's an interesting character, especially with how, like, dubious she is, you know. Mm. And in a way, she seems like he who remains is, like, you know, right-hand woman. Right. So... And, and given how this episode ends, I think a lot of things are going to come back. <laughs> yeah, if that's true. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, Sylvie uses her magic to possess Brad. Uh, and Brad goes in that room and prunes Renslayer. Um, and so I didn't know what to think, you know, at that moment without the episode ending. Because I'm like, wow, are they really going to take her out? Like, uh, a part of me was already like, they can't end her so quickly. Like, right? Like, she's got to come back. She's such a major character. She'll be back. <laughs> I think she'll be back for sure. I, I don't understand how she got out from uh, the end of time. Did she have a temp pad? <sighs> well, that's a good question because, you know, wouldn't she have to have had a temp pad to open up Miss Minutes? I would have thought so. Maybe there happened to be a temp pad at the end of time. Because I don't think Sylvie would have, like, you know, kicked her in there and let her still have a temp pad. That would right. have been stupid of her. Yeah. So, that's a good question. I would maybe have to rewatch the end of uh, the last episode. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe there was a temp pad in the, at the end of time. Um. Okay, so, yeah, Renslayer gets pruned. And then Mobius and Sylvie escape uh, with Timely. So they go to the room with the loom. And Loki's like, um, I, I'll volunteer to, to put on the radiation suit. But no, Timely's like, no. Um, you know, I know more about this stuff. It should be me. So Timely volunteers to put on the suit and fix the loom. So he does so. And then, so Timely goes outside. 
and instantly it's just like spaghetti yeah. <laughs> like explodes. <laughs> his whole, and I thought that was like a cool like kind yeah. of thing the way they kill him there. Okay, yeah. It's it's like what they say happens like if a you know a person went in a black hole. Right. Basically. Yeah. Spaghettification. Yeah. <laughs> um. And so then the whole team is just like, uh oh, what now? And the loom, you know. Uh, starts to like you see the tear and it get bigger, and then the loom explodes. And I wrote seemingly kills everybody. Yeah. Uh, but of course that can't be the case. No, nah, there's two episodes left. <laughs> <laughs> this is just like emptiness. <laughs> the next two episodes. So yeah, I really don't know what the. Uh... I mean, it's a blank slate now. They can go wherever direction they yeah, want. Yeah, it's like you said. We might. It might be a thing where they all wake up and are like, "Where are we?" Or it might be a thing where we find out that in some way this was like a simulation. Or, yeah. You know, nothing is as it seems, or something. Yeah. <sighs> I don't know. I, I mean, we saw Kang and Ant Man also like get kind of like disappear, like stuck in the machine or whatever. And now this Kang is like he dissipates into the ether, kind of like he always comes back. I imagine, right? So. Or I almost feel like we could find out there's even some other like backup system that uh, Kang put into place to where like you know this can't happen. Something, yeah. I mean, for sure, there's something, but. Uh, uh, I'm curious about where, where it's going to go for sure. Yeah, it, it's it's a good cliffhanger, but at the same time, it's just like, it, you know, it actually reminds me kind of uh, the end of Infinity War where the snap happens and everyone's like yeah. disappearing. I'm like, this is cool, but I already know these guys are all coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, you know, not a, not a ton of stakes. I'm like... Uh, Kudos for you to doing something I didn't see coming. Right. But, like, I know how this is going to end. For sure. <laughs> but, you know, just like with Avengers Endgame, as long as they do it good, I everybody mean, will be happy. Yeah, they got two episodes now to work from where, this position. I, I'm interested in seeing what they do to close this out. Yeah, for sure. Um, this, You know, it's, it's funny. This is the one of these Disney Plus series that I'm like, this is good enough that, like, I almost wish there was more episodes. Yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> Whereas some of the other ones, it's like, oh, yeah, okay, you can wrap things up. <laughs> <laughs> it could, yeah. There, there were episodes where, like, halfway through the season, or there were a series, halfway through the season, you're just like, they're going to mess this up. There's yeah. no way. Yeah. This one I'm, I'm excited about. I'm intrigued. Man, I got to say, like, I, I am glad that, um, you know, with Daredevil, they are, like, yeah. reevaluating it. I wonder what they're gonna do with um, uh, oh, what's the what's the one we're kind of why do I always forget that character's name from Hawkeye? Echo. Echo. Uh, so yeah, because like I know originally, like they were, it's been bumped into next year now. I think because of the strike and everything, but originally the plan was they were gonna drop it around Thanksgiving, but just drop all episodes at once. And I think that's because they don't have confidence in it, and they're like, well. One week of bad press is better than like six weeks of bad press, basically, right, you know. Yeah. And so, uh, but a part of me wonders is like maybe they'll try to reshoot some of that, rework it a little bit if that's the case. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, they th look, they've been taking hit after hit after hit lately, and people are losing interest. You know, like a lot of these uh, YouTube channels that you know cover this stuff. I heard that they're getting less, they talk about themselves, they're getting less viewership. So it seems like Marvel's lost some of that viewership. So, I mean, they, they have to earn back that confidence and you can't keep putting out, you know, products like that, uh, you know, it's only going to hurt you. You know, the other thing though that I heard is that um, apparently the uh, review embargo for the Marvel's movie coming up mm -hmm. is like the day before it comes out. Oh. And so that's generally not a good sign either. Yeah. Generally, if a studio has confidence in a movie, you know, they'll uh, let people review it like, you know, weeks ahead of time. Or, yeah. um, so having it the day before, you know, and I think there's been like cases to the contrary where, you know, that happened and the movie still ended up being good. Mm -hmm. But it's like, man, I just, uh, I want Marvel back on the right track. And yeah, it, for sure. And so it's a little disconcerting to hear that. Yeah, I I definitely want Marvel back to where it was in Phase 4. Was it Phase 3, Phase 4? 
With Infinity War? With I think Black that was Panther Phase or... 3, I want to say. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, I did read today that uh, they did pick a showrunner for the Daredevil series. Apparently, it's the guy that did um, the Netflix Punisher show. Okay. And he, I guess he also did Jack Ryan on Amazon. I haven't watched that. Mm. Which... I thought the John Barenthal Punisher, I thought the first season was awesome. Mm. And then I never made it through the second season. I just kind of got bored and dropped off. Yeah. Which happened with some of the other Netflix series, too. I didn't care for, like, the bad guys And after that. Like, uh, there was, the, what, Madani was, like, a, a FBI agent. And then her partner became, like, the bad guy. And I didn't really care about their whole story at all. I just, no. Yeah, I dropped out of that about halfway through. Which was crazy because I really, really loved Punisher season one. I thought it was great. Yeah. And then like season two rolled around, I was all excited, and I watched maybe four or five episodes of it, and I was like, I don't know, I just got bored as hell and right. dropped off. I was like, man, yeah. it sucks. What that happened with some of those other? I remember like um, Jessica Jones. Like I loved season one. Yeah. Season two was terrible, but I still like watched it. And then a season three came out. And I was like, so like, man, season two was so bad. That I can't do. Season I felt three. that about Luke Cage also. Luke, Luke Cage season one, I thought was amazing. And even with Luke Cage season one, I thought like, towards the end of the second half of the season was it was already kind of slowing down. Well, because he got rid of Cottonmouth. Right. He right. was so interesting. He was it, such a good character. Yeah, and it, it just kind of got. And then yeah, I I watched maybe two or three episodes of season two and i was like man this sucks yeah bushman I was just, I was so yeah i was like i'm done with this yeah. i didn't even make it all the way through iron fist season one i tried oh, iron fist was by far the worst god i tried and i'm like god this is so boring and so bad that dude did not try he did not try like they said he didn't practice like the martial arts that they were trying to teach him he was just he gave it no effort man and you could tell by watching it. Yeah, he wasn't good, and the show, like, even if they had a good actor, I don't know if it would have saved it because, like, it, right. it was written very boringly. Yeah, I was like, "Good God, how did this get past muster?" Now, Daredevil, I watched all three seasons, and I loved yeah. all three seasons. Daredevil thought, was solid. It was solid as hell. Yeah. And like the Defenders one, where they all came together, that was pretty bad too. Yeah, I mean, it was. It could have been good, but God, they just the execution was just so bad. Except for Danny Rand, like he just wouldn't have been <laughs> <laughs> right. Everybody's like, "Yeah, you can leave him." Off yeah, yeah. He was like universally like nobody liked yeah. him. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens when you give it no effort. Like, you know, I can tell you, Tom Hiddleston is working hard to yeah. be Loki. You know, you can tell. I really like Tom Hiddleston. Yeah. he's a good actor, man. No, I mean, all these guys uh, in Loki and Wandavision, these, you know. Even Samuel Jackson in Secret Invasion, he's giving it his effort. Yeah, you know, it's just everything else. Everything else sucked. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, uh, you have your own show and you just don't bother to give any effort. That's nuts, man. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those Netflix shows definitely a mixed bag, but some some great stuff in there. Yeah, go watch all those season ones, <laughs> except for. Iron, or yeah, Iron, Iron Fist. Fist yeah. <laughs> yeah, besides that, yeah, the honestly, the only one of those I would recommend to watch the whole thing would be Daredevil. Yeah. The other ones, yeah, like Punisher, Jessica Jones, uh, Luke Cage, you can watch the season one. Yeah. But don't go any further is my right. recommendation. Right. Yeah. Uh, Cottonmouth, I really like that. They should have kept him in that show by, by far. He was by, the best character in that show. You know, I don't even know what Marvel's official stance on those Netflix shows is because originally they were like, oh, yeah, these these are canon. They happen in the same universe. But now they're changing up like Daredevil completely, right? Well, yeah. not completely, but to some extent. Yeah, I mean, it's the same actor, but like, like it seemed very different. Different universe, yeah. So, yeah, did, his, his portrayal like in that episode of uh, She-Hulk did not seem, you know, in line no. with how he was be betrayed before. And like we've gone over ad nauseum about that terrible last episode of Hawkeye, Kingpin's portrayal was yeah. not the same and it was bad. Yeah, that was trash. Vin Vincent <laughs> D'Onofrio is awesome, but just... Yeah. We've seen him in, in the original Daredevil. He was amazing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I don't know. 
I mean, I just don't like how they made his character like basically a metahuman. I mean, and you can say they didn't, but he wouldn't have survived what happened to him. Right. You right. know, if he wasn't. Yeah. So it was just ridiculous. I hated that episode. Mm hmm. But to be fair, in the comics, he can somehow fight Spider-Man, <laughs> and he's like a normal human. <laughs> he's like throwing cars around and stuff. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, he's portrayed like very big and bold. Just because he's fat. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's not fat, it's muscle. <laughs> Oh no neck looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> he like took some experimental steroids and they just had a <laughs> right. really weird effect on him. Like <laughs> I know I look morbidly obese, <laughs> but it's all muscle. Yeah. I'm a fridge, folks. I can <laughs> I can do some stuff. <laughs> um, well, AJ, any other thoughts about Loki or the MCU in general before we sign off? Uh I'm enjoying it, man. Like, uh, I, I enjoy this season at least as much as last season, uh, probably a little bit more just cause, uh, I like where it's going and it's leading to bigger stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm curious about what they're going to go from here in this episode four where they just wiped everything out. Oh man. I, uh, I have, you know, I have the Marvel unlimited app for reading comics. Mm -hmm. And so I've been trying my best to catch up on like the X-Men comics, Oh my God, it is impossible. There are so many. Oh, yeah. It is ridiculous. It's like you read like, you know, one series and it's it's like, you know, trying to plug holes in a boat and another one just, I'm like, how, how can just the X-Men take over these, these this many books? It's yeah. insane. Yeah. And I mean, you know, there's no consistency either. One person writes it one way, one person writes another. So like, you don't even know where you really stand with like where everybody is, you know? Yeah, and you definitely, like, see quality differences. Because, like, like, the main series, like, you know, they'll put some of the better writers on that. But then there'll be, like, an offshoot series, and you'll be like, ooh, this one was rough. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, there's just, like, so many mini series and stuff, and it's so hard to keep up with. Like, and I just, that's one thing I worry about when they finally do introduce the X-Men to the MCU. I'm like, man, they got to be careful yeah. about how many mutants they allow. For sure. Because it's going to get impossible. Because... Like, you honestly could have just a shared universe of the X-Men, and like, if Fox still owned it. And, I mean, you would have enough characters to oh, yeah. go on forever. There's a point where Scarlet Witch, like, she wipes out, like, 95% of the mutants. And I think that's, like, millions and millions of mutants that she took powers away from. <laughs> and there's still too many of them. Yeah. <laughs> They've been, they did this kind of interesting thing during the last couple years of x-men comics where like um they they have like there's this sentient uh island called krakoa mm -hmm. and like they all live on it so they right. have like their own like mutant paradise but they also like figured out this resurrection thing to where like if one if they die they can just resurrect themselves yeah. so like they've been kind of immortal in a way for the last several years in the comics right which it, it's interesting because like that's one thing about comics is like death never sticks to anybody like mm. the, so it, it's like well at least you came up with a reason for it <laughs> <laughs> you're covering your tracks fair enough yeah that at least gave yeah they covered that that's for sure um hopefully uh people can actually die in the movies because that would bring some levity to it you know <laughs> people only die in the movies like uh when they can't get enough money death, to I mean. renegotiate their contract. <laughs> yeah, it's true too. Yeah, no, they're just sick and tired of doing Marvel movies. You know, I I keep he hearing people online being like, "Oh, do you think they'll get you know, um, Downey Jr. and and Chris Evans back for Secret Wars?" And I'm like, I, "Don't get me wrong, I love those guys, but I don't really want them back." Yeah, no. Like, I want to move on. Yeah. Like, let let. You know, there's so many stories to tell. There's yeah, there's so many other characters, so many stories to tell. I'm just like, and like, let let Iron Man's sacrifice mean something. Like yeah. he did die, he saved the universe. Like, let it stick. Yeah, let it stick. Um, all right, guys. Well, we thank you very much uh, for for uh, following along. If you will, please comment down below. Tell us what you thought of this week's episode and uh, what you think of the current state of the MCU. All that good stuff. Uh, leave us thumbs up, positive reviews. 
Uh, subscribe both to the YouTube channel, and uh, if you want to listen to us in audio form, you can find us on your podcast catcher of choice. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter slash X at Zach Jones Live. That's Z A C H J O N E S L I V E. And that will do it for all of our shenanigans and poppycock this week. Please, please, please tune in again next week. Bye, guys. Take care.